So far, you have understood how to analyze data using one way ANCOVA with one covariate or two covariate. Now, let us proceed further. Let us take an example and understand how to analyze the data with the help of two way ANCOVA. Now, with under this, I will try to give you information under different headings like another name of two way ANCOVA, assumptions underlying two way ANCOVA, when to use two way ANCOVA, how to formulate objectives for two way ANCOVA, and how to formulate hypothesis for two way ANCOVA and how to interpret the result which you get from SPSS. Two way ANCOVA means there are two variables each having two or more levels. If there are n levels of one variable and m levels of another variable at least with one covariate then it can be called n by m factorial design ANCOVA with one covariate or more. The assumptions are the same as you have already studied under one way ANCOVA. Two way ANCOVA is to be used when the researcher wants to study the effect or influence of two variable and their interaction on dependent or criterion variable by considering at least one covariate and the data must satisfy the assumptions of analysis of covariance. Now, how to write objectives for two way analysis of covariance? The objective can be worded like this to study the influence of gender, marital status, and their interaction on anxiety by considering psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence as covariates. For this objective, the hypothesis can be formulated in the null form and the wording will be there is no significant influence of gender, marital status and their interaction on anxiety by considering psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence as covariates. As per objectives, gender has two levels namely male and female, single, unmarried and married were the two levels of marital status, psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were the two covariates, anxiety was the criterion variable, thus the data can be analyzed with the help of two by two factorial design ANCOVA or two way ANCOVA using SPSS. The output of SPSS is given in tables 1 and 2. From the output of the SPSS, the table 3 has been formed. From table 3, one can see that the influence of gender on anxiety of teachers by taking psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence as covariate. 
from table 3, it is evident that the adjusted F value for gender is 3.90, which is significant at 0 0.05 level with DF equal to 1 slash 366. It indicates that the adjusted mean scores of anxiety of male and female teachers differ significantly when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariates. So, there was a significant influence of gender on anxiety of teachers when groups were matched with respect to psychological risk factors and verbal intelligence. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of gender on anxiety of teachers by considering psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence as covariate is rejected. Further, the adjusted mean scores of anxiety of male teachers is 20.01, which is significantly lower than those of female teachers whose adjusted mean score of anxiety is 22.63. It may therefore be said that female teachers were found to have higher anxiety as compared to male teachers when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariates. Influence of marital status on anxiety of teachers by taking psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence as covariates. From table 3, it can be seen that the adjusted F value for marital status is 0 0.94, which is not significant. It shows that the adjusted mean scores of anxiety of single unmarried and married teachers did not differ significantly when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariates. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference in adjusted mean scores of anxiety of teachers when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore be said that anxiety of teachers was found to be independent of marital status when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariates. Now, influence of interaction between gender and marital status on anxiety of teachers by taking psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence as covariates. From table 3, it is evident that the adjusted F value for interaction between gender and marital status is 1.85, which is not significant it reflects that adjusted mean scores of anxiety of single unmarried and married male and female teachers did not differ significantly when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariate. So, there was no significant influence of interaction between gender and marital status on anxiety of teachers when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariates. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction between gender and marital status on anxiety of teachers when psychological risk factor and verbal intelligence were taken as covariate is not rejected.
it may therefore be said that anxiety was found to be independent of interaction between gender and marital status when psychological risk factors and verbal intelligence were taken as covariates.